So let's start by taking a look at some, uh, some cost reports. Um, I'm using predefined report templates uh, so that I can go through uh, a significant number of, uh, of examples during this, uh, this webinar. Uh, there are videos, training videos on our website uh, that explain how you can create these from scratch. So for those of you who are interested in, in learning how to do this, I would definitely uh, refer to, uh, to that website. In the cost reports, we will use the cost assemblies and cost components that you've defined in the cost planner. And we will use the uh, conditional formatting uh, to uh, create the uh, recognizable structure of your cost plan. So what we see here to the right is the, uh, the hierarchy levels of the cost plan are easily recognizable uh, by applying uh, specific formatting for each of the levels. We'll include project information. Uh, so that's another type of uh, data that's included in the field list. And then to visually explain how cost is divided, we'll use a, um, a, a graphic or a graph. Uh, we'll start with a pie, but then I will show how many options you, you have available in the report designer by changing that also to a bar chart. A very cool thing that you can do with the report designer as well is um, change or include parameters uh, that which makes your report uh, more dynamic. Uh, so instead of creating a snapshot, you can adjust the content of your report uh, while you're creating or generating it. So during runtime of the report, you adjust, for example, uh, the level of detail that you want to include. And then uh, the last topic that I'd like to uh, to share is uh, for, for the cost reports. That is, is uh, how you can include the uh, the cost by location as well. So let's switch to the Vico Office program. We're in the dashboard <clears throat> and as you can see I've got two projects at the moment on my Vico project server and I have opened the, uh, the Vico lab uh, project that I will uh, start working with. To create reports you activate the workflow item create reports. That's a very simple first step. And then in the uh, create reports uh, view that is then opened, uh, we get a ribbon uh, with all the actions uh, that are available for the report designer. The report content is organized by category and a category is similar to a folder. So if you have reports that are for cost reports, folders in here by defining a new category. Uh, you could also do that by project type if desired, etc. Within that, uh, we've got the report templates, and if you have built a template that you would like to share with a colleague, you can simply export the template and send that by email or store it somewhere on the network where it's accessible for your colleague. Once I bring in a template that I received from a colleague, I can do that with import template. Uh, can generate it by right clicking and select generate or by just selecting it in the list and hit the generate report button. And the first report that I have here is the uh, uh, report that shows the, uh, the overview of the cost in my project. So we got the, uh, the unit format levels and then drilling down to the activities and the resources. So let's take a look at what that looks like in the, in the designer. Uh, I edit the report in order to open the report designer and this is where we can see the page header so that's included on each page of the report then we get the detail band and then the main content is included in the detailed report which is bound to components as you can see so from the field list we're using the components data type uh, to populate the uh, uh, the content in this uh, this area What I did to define which of the content of components should be included is I created a table using the table tool uh, over here to the left and I moved items from the field list into the table. So that's just a matter of dragging and dropping that over. Uh, so let me do that for description. I grab that here and I bind that to that cell in the table. Now it's connected. It shows this little database icon which means that any time I'm updating <coughs> excuse me 
my cost plan, uh, my information, the information in my report will be updated as well. Now we recognize the, uh, the structure and how that was defined uh, using conditional formatting. That is applied by using formatting rules. Uh, we got a collection of formatting rules here for uh, eight layers. So if you would have eight layers, eight levels in your cost estimate, um, the uh, formatting rules will find which rule applies and you uh, define them by uh, creating a, a condition. And let's take a look at the conditions that we've defined here. So for the formatting rule number one, uh, we say that the node level needs to equal node level one in our assembly component structure. If that is the case, the font will be Arial 10 and the style will be bold and italic. Formatting rule 2 says the node level, so the level in the assembly component structure needs to be 2 and if that is the case, uh, the font will be 10 points, style will be bold. And I can continue to define that until I've reached uh, the uh, level 6, 7, 8 uh, as far as I would like to go. After you've defined those and we added uh, one additional band uh, in addition to the detail report band one which is another components band to plot the total price at the bottom of the report. Uh, once I'm done defining that I can hit the print preview um, tab in the report designer to quickly see what the result is of my report and that uh, generates the report with uh, 25 pages, 34 in this case with the entire uh, cost plan. Once I'm happy with the result I go back to the report designer, save it and also from here I can export it as a template so I can make it available to a colleague. I don't want to save it at this point. A, um, one of the topics that I mentioned on the slide was um, the um, uh, ability to dynamically uh, adjust the content of your cost report. You do that with, a, with parameters. So this is an example of that number two, the cost plan report with detail selection. If I generate that report, it will show me an input screen over here to the left and that asks me for the detail level. And so I've set it to be by default level 6 which is the materials and resources and when I click submit the report is generated uh, down to level 6 of the assembly component structure as you can see. Now the cool thing is that I don't have to go into the report designer and make any changes to make this a report that gives me an overview at say level 3. I just type level 3 in the detail level, click submit, and now I've got a, um, a summary report uh, that fits on, uh, on just four pages. If I want to create a, a very high level summary report, I just go to level 2 and uh, now it fits on two pages. Uh, so just by modifying the value for that parameter, I can quickly adjust the content of that cost report. Let's take a look at how that's done. Again, I right click and select edit to open the report designer which opens up uh, that, uh, that dialog on top of, uh, of EcoOffice. And also good to point out is that um, the project information that we included in this report template is coming from the database as well. So the project name is a property that you can see in the project properties. Uh, the image that we just saw is a project image that you define for the project settings. Uh, so whatever image you choose to include in the, in the project settings will automatically be included in your report. So that's a, a nice way to include the, an image of the design in all of your reports. All of the content is the same as the previous, reports that we, uh, previous report that we looked at. Uh, the difference is that uh, we now have a parameter and the parameter is defined over here. The parameter I call detail level and you can see here how the properties are defined. Uh, that is uh, of, the, of a certain type that you can select from in the, uh, in the property settings. Default value is 6 and this is the prompt that you will see at the detail level. Now in order to filter out only those items that are 
lower than the value that I put in, I apply a filter to the components band. And so over here in the properties, uh, you can define that uh, the node level should be less than or equal to the detail level, which is exactly the value of this parameter. Uh, so that makes it the dynamic content, uh, or that results in the uh, in the dynamic um, uh, content that we just saw. Any time you generate the report, it looks for the detail level parameter value. Another use of that uh, that parameter is um, this report that I'm showing now, a cost plan report with a with a group level selection. What you often want to do is, uh, especially for for resources, uh, get the uh, the total number for say uh, the the carpenter uh, labor resource in the project. This dynamic report allows you to do that. So right now we have a prompt that says group by level, and when I select five and click submit, I will only get line items from group uh, from level five of my assembly component structure and I will see the total. So I have a total of 50 weeks for the project manager. If I click 2, I will get uh, a, um, a report that only shows me uh, the um, uh, level 2 unit format totals. If I go to level 6, uh, that would be a uh, kind of a resource report and here I can see the total number of men hours uh, for each unique instance. So even though I have um, uh, say 20 places where the uh, the finished carpenter uh, component is included in my cost plan, this will show the sum of all those instances in the project. So let's open that report template up as well. I'm editing the template. Pretty similar in basic layout, so we got the page header and then the detailed man again. Difference is that we included a group header in this case, and group headers uh, can be used to uh, summarize based on a certain criteria. So in this case, I wanted to summarize uh, based on uh, the uh, the code. Everything that has the same code will be included in the same group, and then all of the groups will be sorted uh, in an ascending order. Uh, so if I find a code uh, A, all of the codes A will be included in that group and will be listed in the top of the report. Of course I want to calculate the uh, uh, the, the sum uh, for that group. So in order to do that uh, I select the active price and activate a summary function. So this will then allow me to tell the report designer uh, to calculate the sum for everything within that group. And now I got a report that tells me exactly how many labor hours I have in total uh, for each of the uh, unique codes that I found in my, uh, in my project. Let's submit that and now we get the total hours again. All of these reports can be saved as an Excel spreadsheet, uh, as a PDF file, HTML if you wish, uh, as well as uh, a uh, RTF rich text format which can be opened with, and edited with, uh, with Word. Now a really nice one, uh, a report template that, uh, that uses the, uh, the, the graph function in, um, in the, uh, the report designer. So when I generate this report, it will pull the information uh, from, the, uh, from the cost plan uh, to generate this, uh, this pie chart. Uh, so that allows you to, uh, to create a, a quick overview of, in this case, the, uh, uh, the top six um, highest cost items in my cost report on a certain level of the of the uh, the cost plan, and um, all the other ones are included in in a single uh, item. I can set the number of uh, items that should be included in the in a top ten or in a top twenty, uh, what I uh, whatever I prefer. And then below below that we have the uh, the cost plan that we saw earlier. Now this graph 
piece of the uh, of the report can be um, can be edited quite flexibly. Uh, so if we open the report designer again, this is the area where you define the report. The very nice thing is you can change the orientation of uh, of a 3D graph if you if you like. Um, if this is not the report design or not the graph design uh, that you would like to include, maybe you prefer a, a bar chart, you can just run the wizard and choose from this collection of graphs that's, uh, that's available. Uh, so if a, a bar chart is, uh, is better suited for the type of information that I want to present, I can go in here and change that. Uh, I can change the color scheme as well. Uh, so if I prefer to go with uh, this color scheme, it, it dynamically updates and uh, it will update my report as well. So when I finish this, I save the report and close the report designer. Um, it will now be updated in my uh, report view as well. Probably I should do uh, something about the size. I should make this bigger uh, because it was still optimized for the, uh, for the pie chart. It shows you how uh, easy it is to uh, to present all that information that you extracted from your building information model in something that can be um, read in uh, in a matter of of minutes rather than having to to go through uh, a large collection of of views or not understanding what the quantities are. Now, Vico Office, um, as I just explained in uh, in one of the the first slides, allows you to define locations. Uh, in your uh, in your building information model, so apart from the locations that you get from the uh, the BIM authoring platform, uh, you can define your own locations in Vico Office. And uh, for this project, I defined uh, a number of levels, a number of floor levels. Um, for scheduling purposes, we would typically go to zones or subzones to create zone or to create areas for which the quantities do not equal. Uh, more than, than one or two weeks of work to, to make the uh, production controlling easier. Um, so these are the locations in, uh, in my project. I can uh, isolate those locations uh, to see what's in them. And we can use that information to generate a uh, location-based cost report. Uh, so we know what the quantities are per location, uh, drives into the calculation uh, of the cost of the components and assemblies, and the location-based cost plan report, if we generate that, provides you with an overview of, uh, of that information in the, uh, in the project database. So here we see as well as a location total. If I change my location structure, so let's say that I'm, uh, I'm adding zones, this re report of course is dynamically updated. Uh, so changing the size of the location does that too. No need to copy and paste from uh, the estimating application trying to figure out where cost goes in uh, an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, you just rerun the report and you're done. 